In this video, we're going to take a look at Califolio Brune Ores. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. This brown has a slight magenta lean to it, which is coming across rather gently and fairly nice. I do see a fair amount of tone variation by pen, especially, though obvious, from dry to wet, and it does shade decently enough, but not enough for me on a brown. I expect more because at this point I'm spoiled in the inks that I'm looking at. I find this a brown to be far too light in general writing, even though it is easy to read. It's not that light on the page. It's just that as a brown, I want a richer tone than what I'm getting from this. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is an Aurora Optima with a broad nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the soft fine, we get the lightest tone that we can expect from this ink, and you can see that it is easy to read on the page. It's just a matter of if that's the tone that you yourself would like. Now, it doesn't feather, it doesn't spread, it does offer a little bit of shading. It's not too bad in what's going on. You see it right in the beginning with infinitely. Even the word greater does have quite a bit of tone variation within just that word. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the soft fine. It's not offering any kind of feather, not offering up any kind of spread, is offering up some pretty good shading, and you see it quite a bit. Now, butt starts lighter and gets darker. There, I really like the way the T and the H look, how the H is darker at the top, lighter in the middle of the H and darker at the bottom of it. It's just very interesting in how it looks. Looking at the music nib, by far the darkest tone on the page. It doesn't feather, it doesn't spread, it does shade very well. It shades from the lightest tones that you saw with the soft fine, all the way to much darker than you saw with the broad. Just look at the word of on the second line and you see it happen. Also with words on the third line, of again on the third line, it's just shading incredibly well here. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding, no ghosting, and no problems with this ink. 
to have a range of experience, all of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib. A Platinum 3776 with a broad nib. A Platinum 3776 with a music nib. The next writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917 paper. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get just a tad bit darker a tone than we had on the Clairefont paint. We get no feathering or spread. We do get some shading. I think the shading is showing up a bit better here than it did on the Clairefontaine. Look at how two goes darker to lighter. Have darker to lighter to darker again. Very nice in what's happening. Looks really good on this paper. Looking at the broad nib, we see that it is a darker tone than we had with the soft fine. Roughly the same tone that we got on the Clairefontaine. We get no feather. We get no spread. We get pretty darn good shading. It is shading very well. Just look at the word friends on the second line. Going lighter to darker to lighter to darker. Nice solid tone through who, but then still starts lighter, gets dark at, dark at the top of the T, lightens back up, and dark at the last L. Looking at the music nib, it is just a little bit darker than we had with the broad. I was expecting it to be much darker, but it's not. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It's not shading as well as the broad did, though it is shading very well. A lot of fluctuation in and out of dark to light tones, which I really do think helps bring character to writing, especially when your writing is as bad as mine. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding and no ghosting. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done on a right pads reporter pad. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get a tone that is a little bit darker in general than we had with the Clairefontaine. We're not getting any kind of feathering or any kind of spread, but we are getting much better shading here than we had on the Clairefontaine, really, let, really letting this ink shine on this paper. A paper that normally doesn't do especially well with fountain pen inks is doing especially well here. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the soft fine. It is quite a bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. It is not feathering. It is not spreading. It is shading better than it did on the Clairefontaine. This paper is doing a much better job for this ink than the Clairefontaine, which is absolutely surprising because it's not made for it. Looking at the music nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the broad, which is a little bit lighter than what we had with the music nib on Claire Fontaine. It's, I want to say it is feathering a little bit, and they're really tiny, they're really consistent all over. If you get really in there, it gives it a little bit of a blurry kind of a look, but you have to look close for it. It's not spreading, though. It is shading, though not as well as it did shade with the broad or on the Clairefontaine. 
Looking at the back of the page, you see that we have no problem with bleeding, no problem with ghosting. Very good match. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes reporter's notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get a tone that is very similar to what we had on the Clairefontaine. It doesn't feather. It doesn't spread. It does shade. And again, it shades a little bit better than it did on the Clairefontaine. This paper, which, you know, now I'm at a 50-50 on when it really does look like it's shading. It does well enough and a real unsung hero to me when it comes to reporter style notebooks. Looking at the broad nib, we get a darker tone than we had with the soft fine. It is right about the same tone that we had on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather, does not spread. It does shade much better than we had on the Clairefontaine. I don't know what it is with this ink and the Clairefontaine. It, while it looked okay there, it has been performing much better on the non-fountain pen papers. So, there's something to really keep in mind. Looking at the music nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the broad. It doesn't feather. It doesn't spread. It does shade fairly well. And it's not stand out constantly huge in your face shading. But on the third line, look at the word short and you're going to see it go from dark to light to dark. Look at breath on the second line. Dark to light to dark. It does shade well and it does do it very frequently. Awesome. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding, no ghosting, and have no problems. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman Dutch Masters number four. Here is KWZ Dark Brown. Here is Monteverde Scotch Brown. Here is Noodler's Mangino Nakahama Whaleman Sepia. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, you see that we get a little bit darker tone than we got on the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering. We do get spread. We do get shading, which with this paper, always has me worried about what happens on the back. What I also notice here is we're getting a little bit more of a magenta showing up. It's a trick the eye does play with slightly different toned papers, but I'm seeing a little bit more of the magenta here. Looking at the broad nib, we get about the same tone that, no, 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 sorry, much darker than we had with the soft fine, a little darker than we had on the Clairefontaine. I was thinking of the broad with the last paper about the same tone. Yes, it does feather. Of course, it does spread. Of course, it does give a couple moments that are a little bit darker that if you wanted to call shading, you could. Looking at the music nib, we get the same tone that we had with the broad. It does feather as we would expect. It does spread as we would expect. It does 
shade, which we don't normally expect. And when we see it, it's normally a danger sign for this paper, which we'll find out here shortly. Looking at the back of the page, the ghosting's not horrible for this paper, though you couldn't write back there. The soft find's pretty good. Nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a pink ink by Sailor, their Bungu Box Mother Pink. Here is a green ink by Noodlers, their Groon Cactus. Here is an orange ink by Elixir, their Siloso Sunset. Here is a blue ink by Califolio Byzance. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot reporter's notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get a little bit darker tone than we had on the Clairefontaine. It does feather, as we expect. It does spread, as we expect. It does give little bits of shading, which are a pleasant surprise for the copy paper users out there. Now, as long as it doesn't bleed through, then we wind up with an acceptable position because the bleeding, or sorry, the feathering and the spreading that are occurring are both very manageable here. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the soft fine. It is a little bit darker than we had with the Clairefontaine paper. It does feather, which we expect, and it does spread, which we expect. It does not shade, which we really don't expect with this. And I think the shading got lost here because it's a little bit wetter pen than that soft fine. Looking at the music nib, it is just a tad bit darker than it was with the broad, a little lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It is feathering, it is spreading. Both of those are not any kind of a surprise. It is also a wetter pen for that. It is not giving any shading, though yes, you can point to a couple of spots where it is a little bit darker, like the cross of the T in mathematics. Looking at the back of the page, while you can't write back here, it's actually doing pretty good. And in fact, nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? It's always hard to choose a pen for an ink that really isn't for you. Now here, I want the darker tone from that music nib. It's pretty good. I choose a wet medium pen for that darker tone and the shading that it can give with a little bit of a thicker line than was the fine to really help bring out the color of this ink. I don't know if what I'm seeing is what I'm going to get all the way across the board, but I feel I have a pretty fair representation. and. I would just have to go, like, out of my pens, I would use my cross with a medium because I think it would put down the color that looked its best. And I would likely go for an ivory paper. Talk about a specific recommendation to make an ink look better. But sometimes an ink is a little bit harder to get its best color from. I hope you got something out of this video. And if it leads to you wanting to try this ink, when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.